Good morning, my friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you doing today? Well, I looked out the window and it was snowing today, which, you know, it's been snowing pretty much most of the trip here, but my grandpa then said, you better get your vlogging done early today because they say we're going to get quite a bit of snow from 4 o'clock on. So, we're about to have lunch. Today's the big sauerkraut day that I'm excited for. And then uh, I'm going to I contacted my mom because we were going to go hang out today and we were actually going to go do the Funk Museum, but when I called the Funk Museum, they actually said they don't allow filming. So I don't, I may still go see it and then tell you guys about it and then maybe go vlog something else down in Dayton. I really haven't decided yet, so I'll start thinking about that and uh, after lunch we will go out and do a little bit of vlogging for today. Then I got to start thinking about making plans for my trip home back to LA. So. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, Papa's been hard at work making the food today, and I'll tell you, when I was growing up, my grandma wouldn't let anybody do anything in her kitchen but her. And so, I think everybody always assumed he couldn't cook, but I'll tell you, I have never had a bad meal that my grandpa's made. He should have opened a restaurant. And there's the pork. Mmm. Well, there we go. There's the sauerkraut the pork and that should pretty much pull apart like uh, pulled pork and then that is my mom's famous applesauce homemade we realized we forgot the mashed potatoes so papa's working on that but you see the trick to the good sauerkraut is that you have to put pieces of the pork in there you see that now we've got the mashed potatoes we've got everything and we've got a little beggar a little beggar Well, like I said, the weather's supposed to get bad today, but I got about, looks like about four hours before that's gonna happen. So I'm gonna take a massive undertaking. I'm actually gonna drive to Indiana today, and my goal is I wanna go see the Hoosier Gym from Hoosiers, the movie Hoosiers starring Gene Hackman. I love that movie, it's so inspirational, and you know, Indiana basketball is no joke. When I was growing up, everybody knew Bobby Knight, everybody knew how Indiana is just known for basketball and being as close as I am to it, even though it's a bit of a drive, it's about an hour plus drive, hour and a half, I'm never in Indiana for any other reason, so this is the time to do it. So let's go. Goodbye, Ohio. Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. Well, we've passed all kinds of good stuff we don't have time for, like the Giant Candle, Wilbur Wright's birthplace and museum, and the Indiana Ball Basketball Hall of Fame. There's a sign for it, Hoosier Gym. Well, we made it. Well, we are here. I had to park about a block away. There's nowhere to park, but we are at the Hoosier Gym. The gym where Coach Norman Dale makes us come back. Now, Gene Hackman plays a character in this who at one point was a college basketball coach in Ithaca and hits a kid and ends up leaving the school, ends up joining the Navy for 10 years, and they bring him back to coach this high school team and get one kid named Bobby Chitwood to play basketball again. Now, what's interesting about this movie is you also get a really great, and I mean really great cameo, or supporting role from Dennis Hopper, who plays a former basketball coach slash local hero basketball player who's now a drunk, and Gene Hackman ends up enlisting him to be his assistant coach. His name's Shooter, and we are at the school. Wow, look at the top of the building. They have a cannon or a, maybe it's supposed to be a telescope or something up there. Wow. And it wasn't until actually they started making this movie in the mid 80s or the early mid 80s that this schoolhouse had even been used. And the storyline is that he comes here and is supposed to take a teaching job so that he can teach um, or to be the basketball coach and in order to be the basketball coach you had to actually have to be teaching one of the classes so everybody in the community pretty much sees him as an outcast and does pretty much everything they can to undermine him from getting success with this team 
So let's go in and see the museum. And there we are. Heck yeah, I can't wait to see it. All those memorable moments. Gene Hackman telling him he's only gonna play with four on the floor. Let's do it. Well, I got here and they actually have a tournament going on. There's a poster up there, signed. And then of course they have a gift shop full of Hickory merch. And then right up there is uh, Brad Boyle's uniform from Hoosiers. He played wit. Gene Hackman actually would have been sitting right here. Look at that. The actual gym, you can see the Hickory H in the center. And when Gene Hackman actually enters, the locker room would have been in that corner right over there. Do you feel like you're in the movie right now? <laughs> Look at that. It matches. I mean, it's so similar even to this day. You can see that's exactly the same place the Hickory scoreboard would have been. So Gene Hackman would have been sitting over here. That's when they would have uh, when they would have had that moment where he was reprimanding and punishing any players that weren't listening to him or talking back. And he tries to play with four on the floor. And the uh, referee says, coach, you gotta have one more player. And he goes, my team's on the floor. We're gonna go up in the stands. Now, I highly doubt they're gonna let me in the locker room, but I might try and ask. And right here is where this scene happens. Let's see what kind of hand I've been dealt here. Seven players, that is. Now they've clearly changed the backboards because the original ones in the movie are white, white wood. Now those those look like more like the original backboards. Well, first of all, let's be real friendly here, okay? My name is Norm. Secondly, your coaching days are over. Up there on the practice ones. Same floor and everything. So this is awesome because this is actually the same way that he comes up from the locker room. And here it is. This is the locker room where all those speeches would have happened. The players would be sitting right here, and Gene Hackman would be giving that speech from right inside here going, my word is absolute law. How many times do you pass the ball before you shoot? Four passes before you shoot. How awesome is this? Look at that. This is awesome. You don't really see any of this actually in the movie, but it's pretty much all shot from right here. All of those motivational speeches and basically when they let him know, hey, you, uh, you're gonna be out of here soon. Nobody likes him, he's a newcomer. They basically all tell him, hey, we have a certain way, of thing, way we, we do things around here and if you don't wanna do them, you don't have to be here. And he immediately tells the guy who's the assistant coach first, your services are no longer needed and uh, gets rid of him and basically tells the team, you listen when I talk. If you can't do that, you don't play here. Old school basketball. And you'll see Gene Hackman sitting right there. And then you see him actually leaving right up through here. So when the, uh, the game goes to start, he comes walking up here, comes right up here turns around the corner and then before he opens that door he says 
Welcome to Indiana basketball. And then the door opens and boom, here he comes. Looking right at that. In memory of Kent Lee Poole. Now, as I understand it, when they don't have games or anything going on and you come here to visit, you can actually just shoot baskets and play and have fun and everything. But since they have a tournament, I'm not even going to try. We're going to get out of here, but right over there, right over there, Gene Hackman would have been sitting and would have got ejected from the game. And just so you can imagine what it would look like when the ball comes down, right there. And of course, same rafters. A lot of those times where he's giving direction to the, the players, you can actually see those rafters right above you. And of course, the way I can match up everything is because when he's sitting over here and he's giving direction to the players and everything, you can actually see the, uh, the scoreboard over there for Hickory. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, tour into the filming location of Hoosiers. I love this movie. Gene Hackman and Dennis Hopper classic. Barbara Hershey's pretty good too because she plays a real stick in the mud. And I believe that poster, it looks like it's signed by Dennis Hopper. Oh, no, no, it's uh, the director, David Anspaugh. Well, I really wanted this shirt, the one that says Hickory Gym or Hoosier Gym that says my team's on the floor, but they don't have it my size, so I'm going to get this one instead. All right, I've purchased a shirt. I've helped support the place. I feel good. I had fun, and I'm out of here. Now check this out. They actually, and then right here, they actually have some mementos of Larry Bird's. You can see there's a shirt, a Hoosier shirt signed by Larry, a basketball. There's another basketball signed by Larry. Some of his uh, college stuff. Pretty cool. And I'm really glad that at least if they were having games in here, they were allowing me to go in and see it because uh, I would have been really bummed if I drove an hour and a half to come find this sign out front. Awesome. We are out of here. I definitely dig the area where the gym is. I mean, it's got a lot of character. There's a, a hitching post for a horse and a fake parrot and a big cross. Like I said, on the way back, and it just started snowing, so definitely time I get out of here, get back to Ohio before the weather turns bad, because I actually have some friends coming to visit me. Some of you YouTubers might know the name Daryl Turcott. He and his family are driving four hours to Ohio to come visit me. How cool is that? Now I kind of decided before I even came on the Christmas trip that I, I just couldn't do any meetups because my days here are just far too unpredictable. I can't plan out anything in advance and I just I really wanted to dedicate my time to my family. And so um, even though I would love to visit people, I just said, you know, this probably isn't the best trip to do that. However, I got an email from Doug Turcott, Daryl's son, and said, Jordan, I know you're busy, but if you happen to have any time would you allow me to drive down and vlog with you for just a little bit, um, even if it's just an hour? Because I'd love to surprise my dad for Christmas by appearing in a vlog with you. And I said, if I can find time, my friend, absolutely I will. I would definitely do that because the Turcott family's been watching me since I had, I think, 40 subscribers. So they've been loyal to me and I want to be loyal to them. And then the next day, Daryl himself sent me a message and said, Jordan, I know you're busy, but if you happen to have time, would you mind if we drove down and visited you while you're in Ohio? And uh, we just played it by ear, and today he sent me a message this morning and said, do you happen to be free today? And I said, I, I will be. Um, so he said, I'll be there around five. So we're gonna visit the Turcots today, how cool. I thought it was, I had to do it. You know, just so funny that his son would request it, and the very next day his dad would request it. So it'll be fun. Well, Knightstown, we are out of here. Totally worth the drive. If you like the movie, and I love the movie. Well, there's the big candle. Well, there's a fireworks store.
We're back in Ohio. Find it here. Ah, the familiar sights of Ohio. Well, I just got home and uh, the Turcotts had a little bit of uh, car trouble, so they're gonna be a little bit late and look at what was on the table. My grandpa's sister Lois got him this and he put it on the table and he said, I know you saw it, I'm gonna need some help eating it, so help yourself. Look at that beautiful box. It's like a big gold brick sitting right there in the middle of the table. <laughs> now it's always a little bit of a game to figure out what is what. But I would bet that that one is my favorite, the Opera Cream, and I would bet that that one is a chocolate covered cherry. I'm gonna try it, let's see. If I did it right, it should be white on the inside. Oh yeah, perfection. Well, I told you the snow was coming and we got a blanket of it already. The Turcots are still on their way here. We got a snowstorm coming and Papa and I are watching the Cotton Bowl together. We love Ohio State. Well, thank you. Thank you for the licks, my friend. Well, the Turcots should be here any minute. This is great. My grandpa's neighbors have a gigantic Brutus Buckeye inflatable out there because we're all watching the game. I told you everybody in Ohio loves their Buckeyes. Look at all the snow we got. It's at least three or four inches. I forgot to tell you guys, in addition to the uh, the Hoosier t-shirt that I got, I actually picked up a couple of these little uh, little booklets that told about the gym and I'm gonna send them out to a few of you. Pretty cool, they have like some of the history and everything. I brought, it, brought one for my grandpa, but I figured other people would want one too. Well, you can tell by looking at that guy, we had company. Daryl and Darla came. They brought Ja some clothes. They brought him that sweater. They brought him a Santa hat for next year with an attached beard. Some play toys. They brought me a gift. They brought Tara a bass, uh, bag of stuff. They brought my mom a bag of stuff. They brought my grandpa some candy and I'll show you what else they brought me. They didn't want to be on the vlog, but look, they brought me, there's four cupcakes in there, four in there, four in there. There's cupcakes there, and there's cookies and truffles and candy. There's a caramel apple. Look at all that. What nice people. Thank you so much, Daryl and Darla. That was so sweet of you.